Hello, this is Mr. Moreno. I'm messing with the settings. All right. Hello, this is Mr. Moreno, and this is for Chapter 4.2, Weathering and Organic Processes from Form Soil, and this is for Pass 6. Now, the last video, I tried not to look down, but I cannot do this today because this one is a lot more complicated than the last chapter section. So first, we're going to start with the first vocabulary word, which is hummus. And the book describes it as the decayed organic material matter in soil. And that's what hummus is. Now, you might not understand what that means. Organic material means something that was once alive. So I drew it here, like leaves falling from a tree. That's organic. Or here, it may not look like it, but this is supposed to be a fox that died. And things that die, things that were once alive and died, inside their bodies, or if it's a plant inside the leaf, some special chemical processes happen. And because of this, there's a lot of nutrients inside plants and animals. So when they die, eventually bacteria can break them up into very itty bitty particles. A fox, even people, anything. And why is that important? And this actually happens a lot faster than you would think. This is important because other plant life can absorb these particles as food. So if this fox dies, eventually he becomes a lot of particles of good hummus, and this tree can suck it up and grow larger and healthier. So that's what hummus is. It's dead things that break down, and I'm not in the frame, so let me move. And they break down and become part of the topsoil. Now, what is topsoil? Topsoil is kind of explained a little bit on page 124 when it talks about soil horizons. Now, a soil horizon is a level. And for some reason, these levels tend to happen in straight lines. But if you think about it, it's not that unusual because if there's a place with a lot of trees and a lot of things are falling down, it should fall kind of evenly, right? And it makes sense that if organic is organic material or things that come from dead animals or plants, it should be towards the top, right? Because most things that are alive live towards the top, top of the earth, on top of the surface. So this top layer that has a lot of hummus is called topsoil. Now, topsoil is so important for the growth of plants that some places even will sell you topsoil. If the if you live in a house where the topsoil is not very good, you can actually buy this organic material from some stores that help out people trying to grow gardens. So that people will actually sell this. And it's very easy to make if you want to make your own topsoil and make some money, sell some soil to people. But anyways, let's move on. So whatever this topsoil and the second horizon, so horizon B is made of, is very important because the more organic stuff that's in there, it means the more nutrients, the more things that can grow. Now, the second one has things like clay, sand, or silt. Why are these important? Well, if you look on page 128, it tells you the size of sand, silt, and clay. And if you can imagine, if the size is smaller, it means it's really closer together, so water cannot go through it as easily. And that is one of the reasons why clay is very important. If you see on page 128, it shows you the relative size of clay compared to sand and silt. It is very small. And that is good because in this layer, layer B, if it rains, it can hold water longer. So this is wet soil now. The water is going down slower. If it was just sand, and the particles are too big, the water would just go straight down and the plants wouldn't have time to drink it up. So clay is important because it holds moisture in water and it gives these plants many days of water, many days that they can hold on to this water or save it for later. So that's why clay is important. The next thing was climate and landforms affect soil. It's on page 125. 
and it shows you the different kinds of climates. Now, as we learned before, maybe it wasn't this class, no, you'll learn in past seven that the different latitudes can affect where there's deserts or where there's rainforest. But if you see here on this map, it shows you that these kinds of places are very connected to each other. For example, tropical, tropical things are around the equator and they're all kind of together. Deserts are around the Tropic of Cancer and in the bottom in the Tropic of Cap Capricorn, if you can follow that latitude line, and they're all together. And there's a reason for that and you'll learn later why. But the point is that these cause very different climates. And places that are deserts, for example, cannot hold, hold a lot of moisture, so a lot of big plants cannot grow there. And the last thing, there's just one more thing. It was about microorganisms on page 126. There are special kinds of animals, or we call them microorganisms, called decomposers. And a decomposer is something that is capable, like a bug maybe, of breaking down something like a fox, a dead fox, into these minerals. Decomposers can be like centipedes or millipedes, maybe not centipedes, millipedes for sure, because I used to own a millipede. They can eat things that other things cannot eat, like styrofoam or foxes, and it can break them out usually through their poop, they poop it out, but it is very good for the environment because there are these nutrients that plants need to grow. And those are microorganisms. Micro means small, small organisms. So they're so small that in their mouths, sometimes they have bacteria or in their stomachs that can break this down. And they are very, very important to the growth of more plants. And that is all. Goodbye.